Uh, well, okay. <laughs> this should be fine, I think. Yeah. Intro. Welcome to the Voodoo Monkeys podcast. Episode, Episode six. Episode six. Word. This one is going to be about pancakes and other things. Well, not really about pancakes at all, but we ate pancakes earlier today. That was the whole reason why we started a podcast today. Yep. Taylor drove up from Red Deer with pancake batter <laughs> and <laughs> maple syrup. And maple syrup <laughs> because we talked about the dirty money episode yeah. on Netflix. <coughs> about the, you had the genius m- idea of maple syrup maple heist. Toast and eggs, and then pouring the maple syrup on the eggs and toast, too. Also good on things. Other than pancakes. Yes. <coughs> and then so he drove up here from Red Deer. We made pancakes. Had a great meal. Attempted to shoot one podcast, but we were a little bit too baked for it. <laughs> I was too baked for it. And then now, like, here we are. I was like... Shooting another podcast. I was like the maple syrup. I was just like... <laughs> we did some music, though. We did some music, though. That was really yeah, lightning and fun. some jamming. A lot of jamming. Really it was it. actually nice. Yeah, no, I enjoyed the singing part. That was fun. Yeah, we sang like Hallelujah and Simple Man. Yeah, there were some good ones there. There were some good moments. Those are very tough, challenging songs. Yeah, but when we were doing like Nirvana, yeah. there was a couple moments that we were really and like on par too. with that too. <laughs> and it sounded dope, you know? Yeah. It was really sick. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I wish we could have done the Devil Went Down in Georgia way better. I really want to learn how to, to figure do that out. song super good. That's a hard song to figure out in the jam. Well, you just got to practice it, and then, like, next time we come together, I'll just set that stupid drum line, and we'll just, like, go at it. <laughs> It'll be fun. We can do our own version of it. You, maybe we should make a Voodoo Monkey soundtrack. <laughs> to what? We'll just, Cinematic we'll just do, no, we'll just do covers. This is the sound of the Voodoo Monkeys journeying no, through music. No, no, yeah, yeah, we'll just do covers though, bro. We'll just... Well, what's the first song? What we start it off? I don't know, we'll just find a song and do a cover. What song do you want to do we first? We should start it off with something that really rocks, man. No, it's I really like Teen Monkeys. Spirit. Maybe we something. should keep that. Teen Spirit? Yeah, maybe we should go with that. That was a good one. Teen Spirit! I love Kurt Cobain. And do you know, like... It's actually interesting to me. You know, I went through I went through some depression and like some suicide issues a little bit, and like I was thinking about it. And my buddy from my band, that's what he said to me. Like I was going through all that. I was talking to him, and he said to me, he's like, you know, don't don't give up. He's just like, don't and just go and pull a Kurt Cobain. And I like thought about that, and that kind of became the like code word for suicide. So it was like anytime I was ever thinking about. That it was just like that was become the phrase. It was like, man, I just want to Kurt Cobain it, man. And by doing it, it brought some light to the music thing, and then I would just think of other things. It's been a good little like I don't know how to, it's so weird how that works. So crazy. It's almost like his misfortune is now something I can look at, and then like when I look at that and you think about it, then it's like, oh well, maybe I'm not gonna do that. So rather than saying I'm going to commit suicide, I'm just going to say I'm a Kurt Cobain. And then when I think about, like, how many people miss Kurt Cobain and how sad that is because he was a great musician, I'm like, well, I'm kind of a great musician, so I better not do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, it's it's just, that's super ironic, though. Like, he goes that way, but then I, like, have this opposite effect from, like, His action, well, yeah. yeah. That's pretty much what I'm dealing with. I'm like, oh, I want to kill myself. Life's not worth living for. But then I'm like, oh, well, I'm a Kurt Cobain, and then I change my mind because then I'm like thinking about the essence of what he actually did. <laughs> like, yeah. It doesn't make sense for like any of any of it, really. Man, yeah, no, that was sad. That's a sad, but it's a great time. That was that was almost our time. It was a little bit before us, but like, I mean, it was around early enough that we knew what it was. That's not the right prescription for that problem. (laughs) You know? Or like, not prescription, but like... I mean, 
like, he didn't want to go get anywhere you think about it. You pick up a web, a thing, a thing that destroys things, right? It's Who like knew what he was thinking? In my head. Who knew what like, he was thinking? What was Kurt Cobain going through? Can you no imagine? Yeah. yeah, but he never really said Kurt either. Even his band was like, "What?" And then, and then you got his drummer that goes off and starts the Foo Fighters and becomes the lead singer and guitarist of the Foo Fighters. Yeah. Like, and then now that look at what his albums are. That guy's seriously healed through music, I think. You know? Oh man! <laughs> and like, honestly, or honestly, imagine, anyway. out of all the bands in history, like after that, like Foo Fighters, I definitely like really look up to them. I love. The Foo Fighters so much. Yeah. Good band. Good band. Totally. Yeah. The and golden rock and roll band of today. <laughs> yeah, really. Really. That's exactly what they are. Somebody give me the best. The best. The best of you. So good. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, Foo Fighters. How does that go again? That's exactly how it that goes. Like, I've got another confession to make. Oh no, Yeah, something like that. I don't know. But yeah, anyways, but that's just, that's the song everybody knows, but they have lots of other good songs. You know? I wish I could just, like, I'm too baked to actually think of titles right now. The only I one I ever played being too baked. was Everlong. Obviously. Was what? Everlong. Everlong? Yeah. Which one was that? I'll play it for you. Let's, well, I don't know if we should rip that one out. Should we do that? I'll play quietly. Alright, alright, play quietly. Just be very, very quiet. Quiet enough that it's not going upstairs and stuff. Too loud. I don't know if it works out. Quieter, quieter. Oh, let's just see what I can remember. Wait, I can look them up on my phone. Why don't you just look up the song on your phone instead? Because I won't play it. Okay, fair enough. Because in other words, what's it called again? I don't know. Quiet though. Yeah, I should take my headphones off. It's kind of yeah. annoying. Just so you can hear. And that was just a good moment. I'm really glad it happened. Yeah. It was a beautiful song. I like that song. I, I didn't original. recognize it at first, but then, like, once it got going on, I was just so caught up in the acoustics yeah. and the because you know it's different when you take a song and you play the acoustics. Yeah. That the, that's different than when you play the actual song, right? Yeah. I wish I wish your friend was here to take or well, yeah. not your friend, your band, your bandmate. 
was here to take part in this podcast about music because this is where it's at right here. We're talking about the real shit. We're talking about Kurt Cobain, Nirvana, yeah. rocking some covers, some Teen Spirit. But now, now we have the idea yeah, for the Booty like Funky covers. Chester Bennington, though. So, like, let's just that's pick even a, more relevant. So, should we just like record like five covers? Music. It's, it, that happened just last year. We lost Chester Bennington and fucking um, the guy from Sound, Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell, yeah. You know, I was more of a fan of Chris Cornell's songs, honestly. Fair enough. Than Linkin Park. Really? But, like, Linkin See, Park's okay, we're gonna we're, record, obviously. But we're gonna have some words, buddy, because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't listen to a lot of it. Linkin Park is like my. Like idol band. I love Linkin Park. Okay, that's what I want to recreate. Um, but like, not new Linkin Park. You know what? New Linkin Park is gone. It's washed up a bit. That's what I want. Is old Linkin Park. I want reanimation album. I want mixed with rap and rock, or like Hybrid Theory or Meditora. Those were all very good Linkin Park albums. And then after that, it kind of fell off. It became something else. Like Minutes to Midnight. Anything after that album was pretty much junk. You know, Transformers had the one kind of hit song that every that caught on. The rest of the songs were a little iffy on that album. Yeah, but you know what, you can't... Through, do, well, I can't say it's junk. I can't say it's junk, but they definitely... That, one, that first zero, zero, wait, zero, three? zero to 60? I don't know what it's called. 60? I don't know, remember what it's called. But anyways, they, they just took a twist in what kind of music that they were producing. You know? They totally did. I can't really say it's junk because all music is good and they have made some good songs, but it's just, it, Linkin Park, for what it was, is not what it is now. Oh, Minutes to Midnight, that's what it's called. Yeah, the and Minutes to Midnight Theory. album. Hybrid Theory. Hybrid Theory, yeah, I mentioned that one already. That's a good album. I really enjoy yeah, that one. That. But then the Reanimation album is this album, <laughs> but with so remixes that's the first of rap. I've ever seen it was, that was that one. I remember seeing it. Did you know that? I saw the actual CD. Linkin Park like, Reanimation. This one right here is the hybrid album. Same songs, but it's just the mix of it. So, like, it's all the remixes. That's why I do like those both versions on that. Yeah, but it's so cool. Listen to it. Just listen well, to it. I did them. already. Oh, I but you. Already. But the remixes. There's rap in them and stuff. Like there's different rappers. Here, what's another good one? Oh, that's... give it up. Man, that's a good song. What about Finger Eleven? I don't know. I don't know what's gonna be good enough right now. Maybe the live version. Yeah, I guess they had a couple good songs on Minutes to Midnight album, eh? <laughs> but like, after that album, there wasn't much more anymore. I don't know. Does this not sound like punk rock? Yeah, that's why not. <laughs> yeah, this, but this is way different than like, reanimation. When they're like literally rocking rappers on albums and stuff like that. Okay, anyways. That's a great moment too. I was a guy who had nothing to say for a long time, you know? <laughs> what, uh, what other bands have been very influential since we've been young, you know what I mean? Like, that have been influential throughout our time. You know? Like... Hmm? What other bands have been influential throughout our time since we've been young, you know? Oh. Ones that have, like, really well, stuck out. Billy like, Talent. Billy Talent, yeah, a really good one. Yeah, I remember hearing, like, Red Flag, a really popular song. Yeah. And, and other ones, like, Surrender. Yeah, and like Fall Try and Honesty, even and like Devil in the Midnight Mask. Yeah, oh uh, yeah, Devil in the Midnight Mask, River Below. Yeah, I used to have a parody of that on that song. Actually, me and my buddy Colin 
had had but another you know, parody of another really, song. They just they're probably one of my favorite bands, honestly. I love like so much of their music and like they're always got something on their album and I'm like, damn, you said it Bill Italian. <laughs> like holy yeah. shit. They're really good. You know, I like, really enjoyed KG Elephant when they came out. Like, I like when the when, when the song the Ain't No Rest, Rest for the Wicked came out, I remember it was two thousand nine. I was working in the summer, I just graduated, right? I remember that song came out and I was just chilling, driving my freaking 91 Cavalier, going to work <laughs> in the morning and this new song comes on the I'm radio, bad. right? Wait, and I'm listening. 24 <laughs> Cavalier? It was a ni 91 Cavalier. Wait, that was the same year as that? It was, was a 90, like, no, it was, was, this was in 2009. Oh, okay. But this was a 91 cab, I was driving to work, right? I just graduated that summer, I was going yeah. to my job, and like the song came on the radio, and I was like, man, I really like this song. <laughs> and like, I remember listening to it all summer. Yeah, it was a good, it was a good highlight. Which one was that? Glad. Um, Ain't No Rest For The Wicked. Ain't No Rest For The Wicked. Yeah. By KG Elephant, yeah. That song I first heard, I think, on the Borderlands commercial for the Xbox game, or video game. Oh, it's word. Computer, PlayStation, Xbox, video game. Borderlands, really fun game. Um, Ferdinand, One take, you take me, take me out. That was by Ferdinand. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I came up to that song from the <laughs> PSP commercial that was on TV. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so when I, 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 and I was like, this is such a good song. I used to love that. Like be. I'll say. Take, take me out. <laughs> Yeah, it's so good. <clears throat> Man, yeah, some of the songs, or Big Shiny Tunes albums. Like, think about the Big Shiny 2 albums, or Shiny Tunes. <laughs> yeah, no, well, you know what? No, some of those albums, they had some of the greatest songs on there. I'm like, th they had What I Got by Sublime, I remember, on one of the very early albums. I like Santeria by Sublime. Oh, really? Yeah. What I've Got was a really good song. I really love that song. <laughs> I got a Dalmatian. I can still get high. I can play the guitar like a motherfucking riot. <laughs> I don't even so know, know that one very much. Yeah, yeah you, you gotta know that song. Really? He's the love is what I got. Remember oh, that? Yeah. Love is what, what I got. got. Yeah. Early in the morning, rising to my feet. That's how that goes. Light me up the cigarettes and the strap shoes on my feet. Gotta find a reason. Reason things went wrong. Gotta find a reason why my money's all gone. Yeah, I got a Dalmatian. I can still get high. I can play the guitar like a motherfucking riot. Why didn't you use your phone to play that? I don't know. I'm just saying it. That's <laughs> a good song, man. I don't recognize it as easily with from your voice. Oh, really? Yeah. Just because we're just doing like the lyrics, I'm not really like going hard at the harmony here. We're not like busting on the song. I'm just like, oh yeah, we're having a good moment. Just re re reminiscing, reminiscing the song, mm -hmm. man. And then he's like, and then he goes in. So life's too like short to love the one you got, so you might get another or you might get shot. That's the next part right after that. Where like concerts have you seen? I remember my first concert. Finger I Eleven. Tell you, was Nickelback. Finger Eleven? You said Nick Finger Eleven? Finger, Finger Eleven? No. And I watched Thornley. Thornley. Which was also really good because I enjoyed Thornley. That was a, they were kind of popular for a couple of years. They sort of died off there. But like Finger Eleven, that was really good. Yeah. Yeah. With some Finger Eleven songs. Paralyzer. Yeah, Paralyzer. I remember that being played. Popular yeah. At the, um, at that good Times, that's an older one. Nothing but the good times. You should try to remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that that was so like I remember one when I went to the concert. That's all I wanted to hear was that song, and the song was so old, and everybody was like soaked on Paralyzer and these other songs, right? And like they didn't play it for most of the freaking show, and then all of a sudden they did that song, and like it took me back to playing like SSX 
on PlayStation. Oh, like, snowboarding game. Yeah, and then like <laughs> that song's on there, and it they they like start off and they're playing, and I'm like <laughs> this thinking I'm like this is so insane. I'm like I love this right now. Though. I'm like I'm listening to that. There's like, <laughs> and then they're just like, Dah. and then he's wow. just like, yeah. It's so good song. Man. Oh, this song is the, fir uh, the first time I ever heard Eruption by Van Halen. Eruption by Van Halen? Oh, that would be good. Yeah. It <laughs> was unbelievable. Unreal. I couldn't believe it was real. I seriously thought it wasn't real. And then I learned that it was. Wow. Blew that mind. would be amazing. It totally blew my mind. It was great. If I was an artist, I would like, go do like time, street. I was alive, did not happen. To if us. I was a well, if I was a famous artist, I would do like yeah. surprise well, street gosh. songs like that, just in the middle of public places, where nobody saw it coming, and it'd just be a good, and that that way people would be like, uh, like was that real? Was it not? And then later when the media hit, they would be like, what? That was actually that person. You know what I mean? That's what I would do. But that, I'm more like at a stage right now where I think music's come back we're around. Like, we're doing our time. We've gone through we're this rock. rock. <laughs> well, think about it. We've Sounds gone through like the rock. Rude. Yo, sandstorm. <laughs> even, true. Okay, but think about this for a second. I'm blue. Da -ba -dee -da -ba -da. Oh yes. <laughs> okay, but what about what about like the fact that. that like you got the rock, but then now let's look at the rap a little bit. Like when I was seven or I eight. Was like, no, was but like when this, I was like seven, music. when I was seven years old. Eight mm -hmm. years old. That's when the Eminem show Even came like, out. All in, like you were saying, Nirvana before. Yeah, like, but like I was seven, eight years old. The Eminem show came out then, and it was that was interesting because that was new music. It was like Eminem. That was the big thing, and then like there was a couple albums before that that were a little bit before me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then so then I was like growing up on Eminem. I listened to that a lot too, and then like that kind of evolved my ways. That was what really inspired the rap and stuff when I got into my early teens because like, <laughs> I was a very angry child. Yeah. <laughs> well, the first time I heard Eminem, I was still kind of young. It was one of those like, because I remember knowing um, Lose Yourself. Lose Yourself, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, what, 2004? When was that? Lose yourself. I, was oh man, later. that was, that was earlier. Like 90, Eight Mile came up, whenever Eight Mile came out, and do you know what, a song was still before that. It was before that? Yeah. And I remember I watched Eight Mile in theaters, and I wasn't supposed to be able to, but my parents, like, had to go in with me, because I, 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 I would not, like, I threw a fit because I really wanted to watch it, they wouldn't let me because it was rated R or whatever. But I threw a fit, so it got to the point where Dad took me into the theater, let me sit down, and got me all set up, and then he left the theater. And that was the only way I could get into the movie. So here I was, just like, little kid watching this movie. <laughs> I was obsessed with that movie. How old were you? Oh, I was young. I was not old. I can't even remember how old I was, but I was not old at all. Old enough, I would get a babysitter, usually. But I threw a fit about watching that movie because I, I just loved Eminem and 8 Mile, yeah. Yeah, I didn't see that movie until I was like arms are heavy, 20. There's vomit on the sweater already, mom's spaghetti. Well, maybe like... But on the surface looks calm and ready. Maybe they don't have to see it. No, I see. It keeps on forgetting. Yeah, I see Such it like 2015, I think. Yeah. I watched 8 Mile. But he broke down, the whole crowd comes so loud, he opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's choking now, <laughs> everybody's choking now, the clock's run up, turns up, over, blast, snap, back, back to reality, reality. Oh, the ghost gravity, gravity. <laughs> oh, the ghost gravity, oh, the ghost gravity, choke, so mad, the but he won't time, give uh, up, that is, he know, he won't laugh, then he knows his own raps and the ropes that don't matter, he's broke, he's so sad that he knows when he goes back to his mom, who that's when it's back to the lab, and you know, his own rap said he better go capture this moment, and hope you better lose yourself, mm -hmm. Music, the mom. Such a good song, man. Yeah. He killed it. That song was dope. Like, for out That's of like, all, okay, so okay, you know what, song. though? Out of all entry songs into music, 
That is like the ultimate one. Out of all introduction songs to ever like be released into the game, like he just comes out with this song and it's just like pure fire lights up the charts. Yeah, that's first song. Isn't it? They first song, like records. I, I actually don't know if that was the first song. Yeah. I think he actually had more, but like that song just like blew up the charts, man. It was just like boom. It was like lose yourself, and it was like everyone was like Eminem, and then it, it, after that it was like people paid attention to him, man. <laughs> he like Maybe he was working with Dre. Dre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard about like Dr. Dre talking about him and Eminem <coughs> in the studio. And then just like the first thing he recorded was "Ha, my name is." <laughs> right? Ha, my name is. Yeah, that's such a good song. That was the first thing he recorded. You know what, Dr. Dre too. He has been. And uh, like, like he, Dre already had that made, and he just like put it on. Dr. The, Dre like, is like the producer god of the rap world. Straight up. Yeah. He's like. And like some of the stuff he's I mean, produced, yeah, like, on, like, the, like you just like all the stuff he's produced is so interesting. You search up Dr. Dre and you get like a couple albums where he's rapping on the albums and stuff. But for the most part, you're getting albums that he produced, and you're listening to this music that he's producing, and you're like, wow, this is like this is really good. Like, hands down, best producer ever. <laughs> like, I don't know how you how better you would rank that. Like. You know what, there was some classic producers, I'm sure, like, before his time that kind of paved that way for that generation of music. I don't mean so much in rap, but, like, I mean, there were some good producers before. But, like, this, him as a producer is just, like, wow. Like, and that's all our time and age. It's, like, Snoop Dogg and N.W.A. And you think about all those guys, they got old. They were our age now when we were just, like, kids looking up to them. And now we're just like, we become adults and they're like 40 years old. And they were actually 40 years old before. And then some of them are like 50. You got NWA, some of those guys are 60 now. They're like the same age as my parents, bro. And I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah. I wonder what they what kind Yeah, like Snoop Dogg's old enough to be what my are they dad. Doing these like, days, like this thing they did. They've been doing it for so long, you know. Well, yeah, and they don't—they do release music, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they—I yeah, think they spend same, some of their the same kind of things, you know, same spot, whatever. Um, I think they spend like time the like. Always been excited. Going in the what? I think they spend time just like probably doing what normal people do by this point. You know, they've been yeah. famous. They've had all this money. They've made mistakes. They played with the drugs. They had the gang banging when they were younger. Right? You know, the think about their lives is insane. And then all of a sudden, then they were living in these houses, they had these families, they slowed down, they're getting older, their kids are getting older. Probably starting to get think about how getting married, keep, maybe. How do they stay, like, themselves in, in that kind of situation? Some of their kids are, like, our age, or a little bit younger, but, like, think about it, they're 20, 21, you know, like, Eminem's, <laughs> do Eminem's stage daughter stage. is, like, I think, like, 20 or 21 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, think about that. Like, their kids are our age now. It's so crazy. We watch them get old. And it doesn't seem like it was that long ago that they were just popping up on MTV for the first time and you were like, holy, and they look young and you look at them now and you start to see, like, age in their eyes and you're like, wow. <laughs> you know, you can't believe how much time has just, like, gone by like that. Yeah. Music's really defined, uh, defined the ages, man. In a lot of ways, it's been consistent for years and years and years, and so culturally bound to you know things like ceremonies. Yeah. Well, what's cool to me is you could you could find a song in every year, right, and trace it back, and like put that on a playlist, and every year you would have a song going back for however long you wanted. Yeah, pretty pretty well. So it's like time travel in a way. That's kind of like a, a signature of, of humans in a way. That's yeah. Like, oh, well, you know, we got everything that we need. Uh, what are we going to do with our time? Oh, here we go. But isn't that cool? It's like time travel. It starts making a little... I listen rhythm. to a lot of jazz music. I really, really yeah, particular... Check this out. I particularly like the... Um... Oh, word. 
Does making some beats? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I've been listening to, like, a lot of jazz music lately. I tend to. I don't know what it is about jazz. I really love it. Right? And so I'll listen to, like, I tend to like the older stuff with more saxophone, smooth jazz. So somewhere in between, like, the 50s, 60s. So it takes me really ba far back. It's just, like, it's just like time travel. Now, I might have, like, some nicer things around me and stuff, but I'm listening to this, and I'm just in this mood, and I can feel the vibe of, like, what that might have felt like at that time. And that's the coolest thing ever. That's exactly what it is. So I could go back to the 50s, and I could, like, come up to the present time. The only thing I can't do is go into the future to what hasn't been created yet. Or I can if I'm an artist, right? Because if I'm an artist, I sit down That's and I, I am going into the future of what I've created because <laughs> I am the creator of the future that of what you're going to listen to, you know what I mean? So, like... Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, isn't that sick? It's awesome. I love it. Yeah. And as long as, you know, someone out there finds your music and you play it for someone and they, they like it and you're like, that made something for <coughs> somebody else too. You know, it's good. But it can even be just like a self-exercise too, in a way. Just kind of with that idea of identity and kind of just... Yeah. But like a lot of, some music, like I write music and sometimes my lyrics, I like, I, I like embellish them a little bit, you know? Yeah, no, but, like, I think you're just too hard on yourself. I've listened to your songs and stuff. Like, you might be saying some deep stuff, but it's going good with it. It sounds good. It's got a good flow and rhythm going with it. You know what I mean? And that message is just, like, awesome still. So, like, yeah, I mean, so that's what's making... Yeah, message is important, yeah. Really. And, like, I think you just got to take a couple bits of the message, just make it a little simpler, like paraphrase it into something that explains that, yeah. come up with a couple catchphrases, That's pretty much what I've been doing. and then like, just leave it there. I can play just, some songs. Yeah, that under the surface one is like really dope. Yeah. Like you need to like I do that maybe. That song's dope. I don't know how quiet I can, I can play it pretty quiet. No, oh, you don't have to play it right now. I don't think we should. Maybe we should, re well. maybe we should just release it. Yeah, you should release it, sit your ass down. <laughs> Okay, watch well, this start like a bank page. Yeah, we've been really into the music though. It's hard not to play it, eh? It is. I know I've wanted to reach over and play my keyboard, but I'm trying to stay on the podcast topic here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate this new angle that we're rocking. And I don't know if I'll even have drums on it. I might just leave it as acoustic. Yeah. Because it sounds quite good on acoustic. And if I get the dynamic feeling of it, then it could be pretty good. Yeah. Just have to I get the recording so. equipment that is going to be. Bro, can I make a bro, piano no, part for it? Can we oh, make, make the cousin no, side of me? This is what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what. I need to learn a couple songs. This is how I learn piano. I need to learn a couple songs, and then I'll learn some more complex parts, right? And then I'll be able to practice those. Okay. And then. I want to make a piano part for that song, and then you can do that thing, and I can like play the piano over it, and we can just like have like some kind of duet where it was like piano guitar. That could work. That could sound sick as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just sing that. Low. And I'll, I've noticed that you're good at singing that low low octave. I'll just keep on that high octave, yeah. and then we can harmonize, find the harmony in there, and then I'll just rock that harmony, and you go there, and then we'll just like sing through that because it actually sounds really good when we do that I think. It might. We haven't tried it. I mean what kind of harmony would you sing? Like here I'll sing like for the chorus? Well I would have to like I'm thinking like if I can come up with a piano part for it first right I would have to come up with that and then based on what I come up with, yeah. I would sing the harmony with the piano part, that, but it would I gotta sing. Imagine it. I'm really I gotta good. The first I'm really good at I'm locking the first it in. Version. I already have the first version. Yeah. I'm already changing the version. What do you know? If I want to add more to the changed version, I'll, I'll call it. No, I'm going to take the same song that you're already saying. But I'm I just going to add... add bass too, though. I just want to add, add a part over what more. you already have. That's it. I'm not going to add to it. I'm just going to add a part that you already have. Like, Pretty much what you already have. What are your notes in that song? G, F sharp, E. G, F sharp, and E? Yeah. G, <laughs> F sharp, 
Wait, that's C sharp. E. Okay, this is F sharp. E minor. It's G. So it's like. I think it's like G major, F minor, E minor. I don't know. What yeah. How did. What's the rhythm of the song? Interesting. See, isn't that cool? I put the tuner there and I just put it on sound thing so I can hear my notes and stuff. Yeah. That way it makes it easier for syncing up with other band people because I can learn what keys they, they're playing in and then I can just play with my keys, find those notes and those chords real quick and then I can just like come up with something faster. It's been a utilized tool. The best $30 I ever spent. Yeah. And what's cool about playing in bands, I use a suspense metal. Yeah, we were talking about but anyways, not yeah. the notes. Yeah, no, but anyways, no, I was just thinking because I got carried away because I want to practice the that later. Are, are like lost under the surface. Yeah. But if you send me, if it's you in can. reference to this like mental place I was in where I was like in this pool within my mind. If I was you like, can, this is just a reflection of yeah. whoever looks into it. If you can send me, uh, like, you doing the actual song, or something, right, and then, like, I have the notes, I can then start playing with it while I'm listening to the actual track, Yeah. and then I can then come up with something, and then freaking we can come together and we can just, like, record a live raw version of it, and I will have a thing for it, and live you can recording? just sing it, and I'll just... Who, who can set that up? Can Jordan set that up? We can just set it up on this. Jordan could set live it up record? too. We could just, well, we, well, the live well, recorded, guess, Jordan could set it if up. If I have a laptop with the, if I install Cubase onto my uh, other laptop. He I has everything. Out. He's got drums, and electric he's drums, just, he's, he's got guitars, bass. the pocket recorder to yeah. record the keyboard with the keys and then my acoustic guitar. With yeah. these. Well, if we're at his house, <coughs> I would use this one. Does it have a better grand piano? Sound? Oh man, we have like thousands of sounds there. Well, what kind of sound would you use? Whatever you or electric want. piano? I like the electric piano sound a lot of times while let, playing with guitar. Just, let, me, let me treat the spots. I want to figure out the piano part for it. See what I would play. Or maybe not. You, wait, you like that? that well, we gotta right? focus on this. We're getting too carried away into the music again, bro. Oh, music's part of like. It is part of it, but yeah. we're losing the podcast. We're just like doing songs right now again. The learning part. Yeah. Just talking about songs and just exploring. It was like this. Right here. Word. Alright. That's simple enough. That's all it is. Sick. So, I don't know. And, uh, yeah, so, like, how about learning music? What do you think is the difference between playing covers of songs and playing original songs that you kind of, like, write and compose? And you know what? Playing cover songs is good, because if you have a good song, and like, then... I mean, that's what and, I mean. No, but if you have a... Place, yeah, right? but if... Yeah, exactly. The first one that really was this... A, a big step was, like, Rocky Like a Hurricane. <laughs> oh really? Playing that on electric guitar, yeah. Well, when you get a good song like and then you listen to it and it like touches home with you and it's just like a good song, I think that that's where covers like play a part because it kind of still tells a story about kind of where you're coming from. Yeah, and it can like, give you more ideas. The reason I learned to play what's possible in the music. The reason I learned to play Simple Man was be done. Was because I really connect with that song. Mm -hmm. I was determined to learn how to play that song because I was just like, man, that song is like such a good song to me. Yeah, I remember finding like artists that I connected with mostly when I was like yeah. searching for music a lot. I mostly listen to more classic music, mostly before my time. You know what is like, Yeah, like you were saying, with, like music um, at the same time. Like, it's really interesting, like, like the last couple of years, all music before my time. It's mostly like some 60s, 70s, 80s. Nice. I'm pretty much listening to Chris Webby, Logic, 
you know, maybe some, I checked out the new Eminem album, I don't listen to as much Eminem now, and, you know what, like, some of the, I'll check out rock here in time again, here and there, still, and I'll go back to the old times, but the most music I listen to now is mostly jazz, music I have never even heard, I find these tracks, I listen to them, I really just enjoy listening to the piano and the tracks, I'm more into that artistic, classical sound than I am. And I like the fact that it's jazz. I like blues. I like that kind of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, like, doing covers, though, I really like that. I think that'd be cool if we could duet, like, a couple covers, just, like, did guitar, piano sort of thing. That'd be really neat. But it'd be even cooler if it were originals. You have, you're under a surface song. If I can come up with a piano part, you can... Like all I, but I'm trying to come up with some more complex. It would have I'll to be just like, like yeah, featuring. I'll make a Ray rhythm, Allen kind of thing. Like, I mean, why would I have to say? Well, I guess it would have to say featuring, but like I would just play the piano, and, you know, and then we like duet over it. That'd be sick, man. You do two versions of the song, so? so you can do your original acoustic version. Or you could do like your hard rock version, and then you have like this acoustic. I wouldn't do hard rock version. Yeah, you know, or you, or you could just do like acoustic piano version as I don't an know, alternative maybe just version. Really just a so, so check this out. So check this out. No, check no this out. You got me. you got fucking under That's the surface, was, and then under well. the surface part two. That song was sound beautiful. I'm trying to get in, re- inspire some creativity I in know. you, man. I'm just wondering if it really needs anything added to it at all, or if it's better just in the simplest form. That <laughs> I was thinking maybe it's a good idea. I like the piano because it's another really like. It depends what we were gonna add to it. It would have to add like some but really deep to be, like, tone. Like I don't know. I would want it to be the grand piano. <laughs> if that's too much, then I don't know. But like I, I, I don't know. I think I just keep it how it is, just acoustic guitar. I wouldn't add grand piano either. That's probably too much. It would draw away from the just basicness of the song. It's a very simple kind of thing. Or there could be like just parts that would really enhance too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, like it doesn't like, have to be throughout the whole song because piano is never throughout the whole song anyways. I would keep it out of this part. I'm just feeling up the notes though. Yeah, it's uh, E, G, B, A. And then the chorus is. You could do something like this. be less than focus about that yeah I might just add a background guitar track just leave that the course and then if, maybe even on the second verse there you do something like this so G it was G what? G F? G F what? On the verse? Of course? Yeah. G F sharp E. Oh.
Sounds good. I'll do it again. I'll try. I'm gonna try to find a rhythm that goes better with that. G F sharp. G F sharp. Okay. We'll play your part. Play your part again. Don't say the notes though. It's a mess, but like other than that, most of it sounded good. Yeah. And we have that on camera, that's sick. Man, this podcast is like a music special, that's what it turned into, eh? Is this yours? It's another one, yeah. Yeah? Do you have anything you don't have lyrics to? Yes. Play something you don't have lyrics to. It is a song like this. Um. One part I haven't Tr- really try not to play too loud though, it's still. The one part I haven't written yet is not the lyrics. Most of all, it's not. Here's one part. Wow. Well, yeah, this one I was playing earlier. I'll keep going with that. Yeah, that needs lyrics. 
I forget. Play it again. Let's get some lyrics to this. Yes, really. I can. I what should it be about? I had, I had a little bit. I don't have to written. think about what it's about, man. I'm. I'm no, good I at taking a little bit. Uh, but I'm good at taking a moment and just coming like, up with something. Keep do. I like that whole thing you were doing, with the whole like, na 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 over top like that. Yeah. That was perfect. Just do that, and I'm. That's what the tune was. Yeah, I have I'm just some 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 written. I'm for just that. gonna like come up with something over top and see if we can actually break away with something there because it was a good song. Like you said, like telling the story like though, though, telling the story. If we could do duets, but like have that whole kind of like sort of like Jack Black thing going on, you know what I mean? But like not quite Jack Black, not quite like vulgar like that, you know what I mean? But just telling the story. Your guitar skills are crazy. You know what I mean? Kind of fucking just like just like telling the story, just like freaking going through like that, like you said, like having the story like that, yeah. it's like we can do like duets that were kind of like Jack Black style, just like go through stuff, and, like just telling the story, it's just like lyrics back and forth, like write out conversations that swap back and forth, that'd be sick. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I've always... That's a great thing about lots of music you, songs, is it's a back and forth thing. Do you like, know what Eminem... Energy between people yeah, in the band, like yeah. Eddie Van Halen and Alex Van Halen, Yeah. and like... Um, even like the guys in Pink Floyd, or like the Beatles. I mean, all the bands based on like energy between well, the members of the band. Eminem a inspired lot of, a lot of really successful ones. Eminem inspired me to think of this like concept once, but like this makes sense now. Is like he has a one song called Guilty Conscience, and the whole song is like this concept of pretty much like you know this guy's about to rob a liquor store. They introduce him, right? They're like meet Eddie. 
Eddie, he's like 23 years old, he's like, and he decides to rob a liquor store, and Eminem's like trying to convince him to shoot, shoot this bitch, and then like, Dre's like, no, don't do it, right? <laughs> and then like, yeah, exactly, and they go through the whole song like that, battling each other, and then in the end, fucking Dre's like, oh, you know, shoot them both, but I've had this idea, like, it would be really good to do like, this play on like, angel versus devil kind of conscience, like, in a in an album where it's just like you got the music going on but the singing is back and forth at each other so it's just like you yeah. got you got like this this thing and this person singing about like you know maybe the partying the drugs the sex the alcohol all this crazy stuff and then the other person's like singing about this other element of life yeah. you know what I mean that's like the step above it and that's it being like an epic undertaking so you'd have to write a lot of music, I think, for that. Like, no, like, I think, I think, like six songs but, like, I like think if you forth. had just three songs I that mean, were, like, I've six minutes, like I think, like, Michael. just three songs that are about, like, album. six minutes each, like, as an EP album, that'd be a great album. Yeah. Just because be it'd be 18 minutes long. of music still. It'd you be wouldn't 18. get that many, like, songs across. No, you don't want many songs. You want, you want a song... A few songs that are changing and going into one another, so that the story is progressing and changing as it just like yeah. goes throughout the album. You know what I mean? So yeah, you start so off playing, and the whole thing just like pretty much plays through like a show. That's that's the smart idea. And then you're just like have this bantering back and forth, but it's playing through almost like a show. But all you're hearing is just the song and then the recording. And then, so it's kind of like that same concept as even Devil Went Down Georgia, you know how like the two characters are bantering in the song, except you'll literally have one part, another part, one part, another part, one part, another part, you know what yeah. I mean? And they're, but like, you'll develop a couple different concepts and play them through in a whole show, and it's like this, like, go together. I think that would be really epic. That'd be good. Have you seen the Guns N' Roses documentary on Netflix? Have you ever heard of 2112 by Rush? That's an album that I tells love a Rush. story. <laughs> I love Rush. It's a story of the Solar Federation. But, freaking no. Have you taken over did, by... Did you see uh, that documentary? Oh, oh. Well, it's not a documentary, I guess. Well, sort of is. I remember it takes over the Solar Federation. It's, um... He, like, tells his life poetically so he's got a backstage and a band and it, they're just continuously playing and he's got this thing but he's just like poetically speaking his biography over top of it and then there's parts where they like play parts of songs from the band in his tours or yeah. like maybe he just oh, sings like a section the but then he just like does yeah that's a very good movie I love that movie Coo 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 <laughs> I am the Eggman! I have done lots of drugs, of course, I have seen this. across the universe. Oh, wait, does he go back to Iron Eggman? Yeah, oh man. The Beatles, aren't the Beatles in that movie? Are they? I'm Where pretty they sure. Uh, they're, they're well, no, like, them not aren't in the movie, but, like, I mean, like, the, they have music. All music in the yeah, movie. It's all the I'm Beatles. Music. Sure. Yeah. Isn't the Yellow Submarine in that movie? Yeah. 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 
But I know, like, they have a lot of songs. Who else are really, like, prominent artists? Like, I mean, I can't believe ACDC is still doing shows. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, absolutely, ACDC. They are old (laughs) now. Black Sabbath? Yeah. They're heavy blues? (laughs) I love Black Sabbath. (laughs) They're good. They're heavy jazz? They're heavy jazz and heavy blues. (laughs) Yeah. Thinking about fucking black masses and I love it, man. I just love it. Like, beautiful. Oh, it's like what is it? Like what about Pink Floyd? Pink Floyd? Yeah. yeah. Pink Floyd is classic. You know what? Even even um, you know uh, Ozzy Osbourne. Well, Queen. I was a fan of Ozzy Osbourne too. Yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. That song is like one of the greatest classics of like all time. Totally. Yeah. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Wait. Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. So good, yeah. Yeah. I don't think I sang it in the right key. I don't know. Yeah, it was close, though. It was close. It was only slightly off, I think, but it was close. But it never sounds quite the same unless it's I don't know. in. It never sounds quite the same unless it's like do, do it to in the yeah. yeah. It's got to sound with the music, man. And uh, also, I look at bands like even what about like, Puddle like of Mud, Twisted Sister. Yo, what about Puddle of Mud? D. Snyder had to go to court. To now they were a one hit wonder. Prohibition of music. Yo. They're the first music to get like banned. Puddle of Mud was seriously um, like a one-hit wonder. Do you do you know Puddle of Mud? Yeah. Yeah, they were like one-hit wonder. Yeah, like she fucking hates me. Yeah, like literally, <laughs> they they had that song and then you never hear from them anymore. You didn't like seriously, but like I they were a one-hit hit wonder. Yeah, but they, they were at like, the first concert I was. At what word? Yeah, Puddle, Puddle of Mud is so sick. <laughs> Man, girl, thought she was grand. Fell in love, found out first hand. Went well for a week or two. Then it all came on glue. She oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Met a tramp, tramp a he <laughs> said. Keep singing the chorus. I never thought I'd be the one who'd sleep. And then I started to realize I was living one big lie. She fucking hates me. Oh, she fucking hates me. Na 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 na. I tried so hard and she told my feelings like I had none. Who ripped them away? She was queen for about an hour. hour. After that, she, she went sour. So good. Man, yeah. Good times. Even though it was awful singing actually in that. <laughs> it was. It's choking up on my fucking throat there. Yeah. What about Nickelback? Nickelback. Look at this photograph. Every, Every time, time I look it makes me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> my eyes get so red. And what, what the hell is on Joey's head? head? Joey's. Joey's head? Yeah. Oh shit. Not Jimmy. Jimmy's. Jimmy, Jimmy, oh, Joey. man, they're gonna kill you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I hope they watch us and kill you. No, I'm just kidding. They're gonna sue your ass. No, I'm kidding. 
No, seriously, you're fine. What, you think they're going to see us? No, uh, no, yeah, they watch And you worried about Nickelback? I texted oh, them earlier. Yeah, the, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Out of this all the other Alberta. bands. This is Alberta. Yeah, and they're from here. I texted them earlier. I texted their cousin. I was like, watch the podcast. No, I'm kidding. We're going to talk about you. No, I'm just, weird. just joking. <laughs> they are from Alberta. Yeah, they are. They're, yeah. they're from Hannah. Hannah, yeah. I, I had friends that... Uh, Silver Side yeah, Up was the first Nickelback like, album I listened to. Stella's pretty close to Anna. I grew up with Stella. And I, I, had some, I remember having friends that were like, oh yeah, my cousin, I'm cousin. You had a frame there, bud. Yeah. Like Austin. I think Austin's related to some of them, somehow. That's I should fair. Like you know what? I know somebody from my school that was Maybe related to them do too. A skate podcast. I, don't, I don't know I mean, who. That'd be cool. He's I don't know who. Bike. He's really good at like, working out, I think. Oh, like, cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's getting like, lots of weight. Well, let's uh, throw down the guitar and finish up some podcasts here. And. We're like. Uh, Metallica? How are we doing for time? What are we at? They're the ones that probably would sue. We're at hour six. Hour six, our journey Almost through music. <laughs> maybe we should stop now. Hey, so maybe this is the episode name. We're going to call it The Pancake Sunday Podcast, A Journey Through Music. Pancake Sunday Podcast. Because we, yeah, that's pretty much what it was. It was <laughs> a journey through music, was it not? We enjoyed some pancakes and some music, some fellowship. That That's what today turned out to be. And I think that's a good focus on the podcast. I don't think we could quite wrap it up. We could talk about a couple things yet, yeah, but throw it down. Might as well give this a good little conversation portion yeah, before sure. we close her off. I'm really liking how this is. Uh, this episode is turning out. Actually, I really enjoyed this music idea. This was a concept of what I wanted. Kind of have instruments, this whole music thing. So talking about history of music and some of the things that we've been influenced by just in our lifetime yeah you know oh that i remember it's like the offspring too you know what it was super interesting it was david yeah, bowie in like green day i want to revisit <laughs> a topic that and, philosophers uh, were talking about after david bowie died yeah. blink 182 you gonna see that but and like that from above 1979 so anyways no um David Bowie, an Some interesting an interesting thing is when he died, Some right? Crazy, a lot of philosophers were talking about um, the concept of like what he had done there because he released Lazarus. David Bowie? Yeah, he released the song Lazarus and he died two days later. Yeah. Yeah. So like, but like he's, he he knew he right? was gonna die, right? But it was like he was predicting his own death in the song, and like philosophers were just really talking about that because he has death creeping up from him under the bed and he kind of goes like back into this shadow and he's saying like he's like I had all this money I spent all of it I did all these things right and then now all of a sudden this is all that there is in the end I'm just laying in this bed dying yeah. you know and like it was so crazy so crazy it was it was it's something was to think a music about video for that? yeah there was Lazarus is a it's a crazy music video you check it out again later when you have time definitely yeah, no, it's worth one. I've watched it a lot of times. It's one of my, it's my most favorite art piece that I've seen in a very long time, still to this day. Like, and it captures death in a weird kind of way. And that's what, what gives it a weird vibe to me, too. Personally, I just find it a weird vibe. I find it hard to watch. A good, good video to watch, but hard to watch. Okay. Just because it's capturing death in such a dramatic sequence that's like real makes you realize oh it just life just happens and then it's there and then it's just sneaking up on you the whole time one day it just shows up and it's under the bed just creeping up on you waiting for you to die you know and it's like whoa what the you know it's really frightening it is and he had this career he was like 40 and then he was like 50 and he's pretty much talking about that in all the songs culture that is like we grew up in is to, to run from it and hide from it as much as possible and live the safest life you can because the world's really dangerous we live in the safest parts of the world yeah in, in real life really there's dangerous parts of our lives still though every time we go on the road it's the most dangerous part of driving 100 percent yeah 
<laughs> Taking photos for the podcast. Yeah. Podcast for real. Because I'm awesome at like that. Just Let me take one more. Alright, wait. No, I don't want that. You gotta stay more in frame. Here, come back. Hold the camera. Oh, perfect. This is good. Sick. All right, man. That's sick. I'll I'll send you those. You can load them to the Voodoo Monkey um, Instagram page later. Yeah. Got some. You know what? That's actually a really good photo. Not bad. I'll send you that and that one. We'll have to take another one later because I don't like the this part. Maybe I want more of this angle, but we'll do that after. Are you, did you just do a press sitting down? Yeah. It's crazy how strong you actually have gotten. You were a little weakling when I first met you. I know. And now you're now you're doing a sitting press with like out the rest of your body. You're just full out pressing a fifty-six yeah. pound kettlebell. Almost 60 pounds on one arm, you're just picking that shit up and throwing it around. <coughs> I don't think you want to do that five times right now, do you? Why not? Do you really? What's the point of doing it once? Or maybe there's a point, if you, all you need is one. Yeah, you, <laughs> well, I feel like you're going to wreck your shoulders if you do too many sitting down. You think so? Yeah, I don't think that's healthy oh, for your shoulders. If you're holding two, Maybe if it was like your other one, you if like it was your one you use all the time, but you haven't lifted rows. this weight for a long time. And then, you're supposed to push up side to side. Yeah, but you haven't <laughs> lifted. You haven't lifted this weight for a deadlift. long time, so you can injure your shoulders easily. Because like you're not used to that weight. You're used to your other weight, but this one you gotta like warm up for and do the exercise with for like three four days before you start doing sitting fucking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You're gonna pop your shoulder out. Maybe I gotta. Really grease the grooves and prepare for something. We gotta like trade that. kettlebells, so next time you come up, we'll trade kettlebells definitely. We should get a routine going with the workout again. That'd be sick. Yeah. I don't know how we're gonna do that, that'd be tough, but I definitely think we need to go revisit cameras and go for a good run into those trails. I, those trails are like home to the booty monkeys. Think about that. Up and down those hills? <laughs> Man, that, those, in, in those hills, in some hills, your camera's Alberta, in some the trees. Hills. In a forest in the river valley, Alberta. the voodoo monkeys were born. <laughs> so, and then, and then, just have us swinging, swinging from like ropes. We'll tie All some around. ropes to the tree under bridges. Hey man, that's what we should There's do. Trees downhill in one of those slope yeah. sections, bro. Let's tie some ropes. Let's tie some ropes where we can jump and swing down the hill on ropes, <laughs> and then what? we'll film it. Like rope to rope, like yeah. Like yeah, monkey. And then and then we'll <laughs> film it, and then we could like make an epic intro like that, and it could be like like the guy from the movies, and it's just like in a world, <laughs> in a forest, <laughs> in, a, yeah, in the know. middle of a valley, two voodoo monkeys, <laughs> and then On it can, and then all of a sudden you'll hear just chur or the chimps, Canada. you'll hear the chimps, it'll be like, chim, 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 chim. or they'll be like. Oh, oh, and you hear running. These two voodoo monkeys. You you hear running, oh, right and they go the through back. the path, and then all of a sudden it just like you hear ah, <laughs> jumps off this ledge and grabs these ropes and swings down this hill like really fast, yeah. side to side. That'd be so, <laughs> so sick, epic, man. <laughs> Do you, this has to be possible. Oh, man, this is so loud. We have to. Oh yeah, we got a little loud there. We got a little loud. We this has to be. Happen. We have to. This has to be possible. You want to check possible. our volume? You want to check our volume? Give it a little just test check. See how we're doing there. If we can build it, we can. How are we it. doing? We're not too loud. If we can do it, we can build it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we're, we're not, not too loud. loud. All right. Good. Yeah. The trails of the valley. We so, probably find somebody to man, that would be so that. much fun for that. That would be so much fun to be able to do that. Yeah. Like literally, to run, like swing down a hill on ropes like that. Like I really want to actually do that. That'd be so cool. 
Yeah. Man, I've been thinking about a lot about like fighting combinations later or lately, and like one I've been well, thinking about is like I've the stiff do, like, jab. Quick one. So like the stiff jab, right? I've been thinking a lot about like boom, and then oh. it just straight <laughs> uppercut. How right? do you how do you buy, okay, go like this? And down. So so then they can like come back around <laughs> like that, but you're ready to block with it. But like what I really want is if it's unexpected, you can throw like that. You see how your shoulders turn? Hold your shoulder turn. So go. No, no, don't turn it before I hit. So boom, I hit your shoulder out of the way, right? And then I got a boom, straight to the head here, Yeah. right? And then, so they might retaliate with this. Cross. Cross. You're going to tuck under. Tuck under, boom, oh. boom. And then right here, check this out. They're going to come here again. You're going to also push that again. Yeah. Off to the side and then just wait, <laughs> wait. You're gonna throw the uppercut to the block and then just a right hook across the face. You got one. Isn't that yeah. a sick combo? Yeah, man. You making me like so, so, of, like yeah. slipping stuff. So no, but like that's his head's gotta be like not there. But like that's the <laughs> whole thing. So you're just like boom, boom, and then you're like boom. You're coming under that overhand, and then you're boom in the ribs, and then when they bring that overhand back, and then you're boom across the face. And then you're gonna fake with the uppercut, they're gonna block down, and then you're gonna be right hand right across the cheek, man. <laughs> I'm getting yeah, really, be fast enough to no, get But like I'm getting really good at like these combinations, but the thing is is about that one. Wait, what's do, nice? Do the jab. Do the jab? Yeah. And then boom. Like See, because it's cross shoulder, I can't like yeah. react to that. That's yeah, why you can only oh, yeah. not that way. That's but right. what's also nice about that is like here, stand up kind of slightly. If you Throw that jab, and I like here and just knock it away and hold yourself out. So I'm just like you're you're throwing it. Sit, we gotta sit down. You're throwing it too wild. So if I do this right, I can also grab around, boom, and bring the knee into the stomach. Yeah. So that's yeah. all I'm looking for is I'm feeling up with somebody. I test my jab. I want them to throw mm -hmm. first, right? So I'm like yeah, here, like and then I'm waiting for that. And as soon as they do that, you know it's coming though right now. Yeah. You're not going to know that's coming. Yeah. You're just throwing a lazy jab, testing it out, right? So I throw two fake ones, you bring your jab, and then I grab it and boom, just knee to the stomach right away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Science. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not... Yeah, traded some combos. I've just been doing just like quick... Just and like check this out. This one works, it works the other way. You bring that... Not a lot of right They bring the right hand. You bring the right hand over. Same thing. Look. You, yeah. that, you got that cross. <laughs> so like... Boom. Boom. <laughs> Elbow. Yeah, so right. as you're turning it off... Oh, you know what I mean? That's a real wound. Yeah. Like a counter like that. Boom. <laughs> yeah, so for, give me the hand. Give me the hand. Bam. And it's really hard to close that distance. Yes. Yeah. Well, in. for you it'd be easy because you're <laughs> taller than me. Right now I got short arms. I'm further away from you, you know? <laughs> we're just filming us, so this is like fighting like ridiculous. Man, those are some good moves though. Yeah, well, I was just getting something in there. I really think about that. like my alter alternating, Get out of here, and then know. I do I do different kind of footwork no. now. <laughs> my footworks now aren't no longer just circulating, right? Now I, I like turn my body this way, turn my body this way, turn my body this way, and I learn my motion. So it's like if I'm going to follow through with the right hand, I'm bring this left leg through, so then I'll come up with a knee on that one. But then I'm gonna maybe follow with an elbow. I'm gonna grab this one, come back with my leg on this one. But after the knee, I'm gonna boom, boom, and then I'm gonna come around with a roundhouse right up top, and boom. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? I'm getting quick at it too, so it's like boom, boom, and then just bam. Crunch. It's all like turning this hip over <laughs> too. See? So it's like it's like fast twitch, right? So you're like boom. Boom, and then watch the hit. Boom. Yeah, this is one thing that you I know? noticed a lot when I started training more. And then you want to stuff is the awareness to yeah. the hips. Yeah. Right, and like the whole how it connects to the back and the legs connect. It's all about like this chain of motion from like your feet and like your. Yeah, the biometric movement, right? Yeah. yeah. The whole chain of like mobile mobility and like kinetic chain. Yeah, but that's where kung fu comes in to be an interesting martial art. Is I like to apply the concept of kung fu to like every other martial art. Is like you're taking the momentum flow of energy, and that's essentially what it is. But like understanding how you can transition into something yeah, else as it exists within yeah. the human body. <laughs> so it's like if I throw a jab, 
and I understand where I'm weak, right? I gotta see how I transition to something else. So if I know I'm weak down here and you're playing, a, I'm doing a martial art, right? So I jab, you go in that under punch. I might be able to catch, grapple, boom. Or do some, do just basic, you know, textbook so move. Well. You know what I'm saying? Where it's just like boom, boom, using yeah. your body momentum against yourself. You know what I mean? Just understanding little movements, right? It's the same as the block. If you're playing a defensive strategy, it's like little movements. Because if I throw my hand way too far out, now I'm open for a punch. If I just deflect you and then react, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. quick. It's just a little boom, boom. You know what I mean? Boom, 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 boom. You know? <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Picking your shots, too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just having that kind of persistence. This, how much of it plays into like the mental? This yeah. is the heart of the booty monkeys. This 56 pound motherfucker, all right, you? We ran three kilometers with this, 3,000 meters each, in 24 minutes, in 22 minutes, or something like that. Yeah, that's how the booty monkey challenge started. To be a booty monkey, that's what you must do. But this is how the kettlebell came from. And as you can see, we get it from on it. Where else do you get such a beautiful, handsome thing? I think that kettlebell has been introduced on almost every podcast, probably. That was... <laughs> yeah. I mean, this thing, it like... It, it, this is more than just a piece of workout equipment. <laughs> this has literally become uh, like a... What do you call it? An heirloom? A What would you call this? Idol? It's not an idol, it's a... Uh, I wouldn't idolize it, I guess. We don't worship it, but it's a symbol of, of the Voodoo Monkey Podcast. You know what I'm going to do? One day, we're going to have an office. And maybe we're going to get an award-winning podcast or something. And we're going to put this bad boy on a shelf in the middle of it, right next to our award-winning plaque right above it. <laughs> An award-winning podcast, eh? Yeah, man, we're going to do this. Well, one one podcast to, I'll, I'll at a time, one thing. step at a time. I'm going to have to up my game if this is going to be award-winning, because I'm probably the weak link here. <laughs> what do you mean you're the weak link? <laughs> in terms of podcasting. We have good we'll podcasts. We'll see. We'll we see just got to can get together anyway. We just got to keep these conversations flowing. They're good. Today was good. We had a uh, yeah. We had some good talks about some music. Yeah, I mean, uh, I really think there could be some benefit in, like connecting like your consciousness with other people I know, other consciousnesses, you know. <sighs> kind of. Yeah, definitely. I'm always down for guests on the show. I've like, been <laughs> maybe through a filter too. Like that's what I think would be great if I was there too, just to kind of help. I think I think it's been good. I'm very like diplomatic in my personality, you know. I'm I think it's I think it's been stuff. good chemistry, just like what we already got going on for the most part. Usually we have good eventful shows. They're kind of funny. Mm -hmm. This uh, might be one of our better ones. We we're, we're shooting a live cast. This Ooh, has been a lot a, of jokes. A lot more music in this one. Yeah, there's. I really enjoyed that. I'm. I think that that's special for that. So it's like that's definitely what it is. It's the Pancake Sunday podcast. Yeah, but we'll it's a journey through music. Out. And the Taylor Elliott album. So I think that's intense reality. Podcast name is Journey Through Music, I guess. I think we should go with that. A Journey Through, through music. music, yeah. Because we kind of talked about all the different music, some of our own writing, some of the stuff that influenced us, some of what's. Yeah, that's a topic I've been wanting to touch on for the a while. Pancake, well, how did I make that? The syrup. We, we never link pancakes to it at all, really, other than the fact that we ate the pancakes sugar, today. The sugar, the maple syrup of audio. <laughs> the maple syrup of audio, what? I don't know. We had a great podcast, but it wasn't without maple syrup. <laughs> Syrupy sounds. Now I'm just thinking of filling somebody's ears up with syrup. What? what, what sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> They probably have some like medical problems. Medical problems. <laughs> you have, have to get that out once you Death get to buy syrup. I, I, maybe we shouldn't do that. I don't have hearing problems on anyone like that, you know. <laughs> Death by syrup. They just die, drown from getting maple syrup in their ears. <laughs> yeah. Gross. Anyway, just imagine how much don't a tree. Don't put syrup in your ears. And imagine how much a tree would scream. <laughs> die another way. <laughs> <laughs> die another way. Oh God. Imagine how much a tree would scream. <laughs> like, 
If you think of blade of grass or other living plants scream, imagine how painful it is for trees. You like drill into it and you the syrup out of it. I wonder, like, what kind of I'm frequency? Sure they out no, but I wonder. No, but I. It. No, I'm not saying it's gross. I'm Warm saying, up. if grass screams or like little plants, I wonder, like, if a tree gives off frequency levels to let you know it's being hurt when you're like drilling into it. I'd imagine, you know. Yeah. I would never drill into somebody's head though to get the syrup out. Yeah, exactly. So we just drill into a tree. That thing's still living. And like, I think we undermine just because it doesn't have the same same thinking we do just because it doesn't speak English maybe communicate in our way and we're like well it's less intelligent but the thing is is it has some sort of consciousness about its existence yeah which is crazy it knows its purpose it knows how to behave in survival format any living thing so that, that's super interesting that we just kind of assume to be smarter than everything like I mean just because we're dominant doesn't make us smarter yeah you can take a bully. That's the thing that happens. That's, and that's why you can like, dominate people that people. can dominate end up getting in power, right? But then those people maybe aren't really the right character for that kind of a role. Like I look at politicians like that you know, over here versus politicians in somewhere where like Europe or where they have the same. Like there's politicians over there that get paid like like eighty thousand dollars a year or seventy thousand. Like they get paid the median wage. We live the, like this regular medium life. Like this is what we have to improve, right? This is what we're focused on improving. This is what we're going to live as. So I have better ideas on how to improve it. Doesn't that make some fucking sense? Instead of like the politicians over here, you know, taking these more luxurious things into their lives. See, they live more luxurious lives instead of the middle class life. Because they're like, we want to bring the middle class up to this level. And like, one of these will happen, but like, maybe living in the middle class would help. Kind of out of frame again a bit there. Here's an idea. Yeah, no, seriously, I'm listening to you, it's good. Ooh, that's been proven to work, you know? Here's kind of like, you're hitting the keyboard stand there a bit, yeah. I hope I don't knock over your keyboard. No, you're not on it. As long as you're not on it, that's all good. But yeah, no, I hear you there. Yeah, no, I was just bumping into the side of it. Oh, whatever, it'll be okay. It didn't go nowhere. I got that alpha breathing in here. <laughs> you don't need any more of that. You fucking took your daily dose. <laughs> brain was already that. My brain has been operating <laughs> actually at a pretty high frequent level. I can't believe how many of those I took, and it definitely hit me pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's been, uh... You notice when you start taking them. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of like, like almost it, an energy, like it's almost like your like, eyes right, stay I'm, more open. You it's know? like an alertness almost. Yeah, your eyes are more open. Your brain feels more open. Yeah, it's like, but like flowing ideas better. There's other ways to create alertness too. Like it's one way to do it. Well, like, and it's I mean, also been proven to help memory recall. I think some of these supplements though is hard to get, like in what we eat in our daily diets. Yeah, and I don't know about you, but like personally, I have a hard time eating like healthy sometimes. I've been trying really hard to switch it up, but like I suck at it, and uh, some I gotta like change. But like I have to change a lot of other aspects of my life also in order to change it. You know, <laughs> so like it's kind of like a big mess I'm trying to work through now. But it'd be good to get back to the health, get back to the root of the booty monkeys yeah. when we were gonna start uh, start a gym. Yeah, <laughs> battle ropes and kettlebells. Man, we were so fit. <laughs> I was in ridiculous yeah, shape at that time too. I didn't like. I didn't have to struggle with things. I was and even though I was sick, push-ups. Man, I ran a race with internal bleeding. Do you almost, remember that? I could almost like go from like a push-up to a handstand. Almost. Do you remember when I first like when those stomach issues very first hit hard? It was after that race. I crossed yeah. the line and I like. Was dropped, but I ran like most of that race with internal bleeding. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, man, that must be so painful. It was pretty painful. There was bad cramps most of the way, and right away early in. But like freaking yeah, no, I made it though somehow. Yeah, I did. I fucking finished that race <laughs> twice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's the whole thing. Like making it through, 
that, like, wow. You just kept going. You yeah. Didn't stop you. I'm not gonna lie, like, when I was younger, 10 miles, it was like, oh, that's not far, but, like, that 10 miles, that time, felt like hell. There was a section I was walking, and I honestly didn't know I was gonna finish this race, and I've never not finished that race, yeah. either. And I, I'm glad I did, but this guy, he got me going, he's like, oh, you'll pick it up again. <laughs> and I'm, like, just thinking in my head, I'm like, my stomach is bleeding right now, like, I can feel it. It feels like molasses dripping down into my colon, right? And I was just like, oh, and it feels like an ulcer too, right? You get sharp pains, like, kind of in your gut, right? You don't know if it's cancer, if it's an ulcer, right? But it's really severe pain, right? It won't drop you to your knees, right? And I'm like, I just decide, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I keep running now. And I'm like, just jogged, and I died. And like, I didn't push myself too hard, and I pushed myself a little harder, and I got going again, and I finished it off. But I was barely going when I crossed the line that time. I ran hard for a bit at the end, and then I kind of like slowed right down when I got to the end. And I was like, come across the line. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> my stomach is bleeding. <laughs> yeah, but like, but that was not the point. I didn't care about the bleeding stomach and stuff. The victory over, over the the meth use at that point in my life. That was the hugest part. You know, it wasn't the first race. That was the second race of the stomach bleeding and stuff. But the very first race, that was really the key point. That was when we all kind of started. We trained for that race, went to it. I recovered yeah. in the math. I was training you in the fighting and stuff. Yeah, we were running the valley. You were a twig when we started. Now you're <laughs> a little tank. Yep. I yeah. had no real... I had a little bit of experience like lifting water bottles <laughs> before that. And then, you know, we were working in the tire shop. Yeah. yeah. Started getting some room monkey strength through this, like, fighting training <laughs> that you showed me. Yeah, that was really good. It was that was a, I miss that every day. That was a really golden time of our lives. Mind blowing time. Totally mind blowing. I would like, I would almost give a lot to go back to those days. Those days were very simple. They were very, except the only thing I wish we could go back to is having those days and the podcast. Like if we had what we had in the podcast now, but that can't happen, right? You know what I mean? But like those days were, those were prime. Yeah. If we were shooting a, this good of a quality podcast then, <laughs> you know what I mean? Imagine yeah. how many episodes we would have done, how many good episodes, like a frickin' the Statler one, like when we actually did that run with the kettlebell and stuff. Yeah. Like, we did some crazy things. Yeah. Like, we would work out for, like, four hours, like, be dead. We'd spar for a couple hours, and then we'd go for, like, a good, a run. you know, run. Like, like four to eight K. Yeah. Depending on how much your pussy ass could take. <laughs> yeah, like I'm done stuff. But like after eight weeks of like training, literally almost like all day for me, you would have to go to work sometimes. I wasn't working during that time, so like I would literally train you, and then I would go home for a couple hours, go back to the gym. I'd work out all afternoon, and then I would go run again. Like I was in such good shape. I remember getting yeah, this such definition to your body. Yeah, I remember going to this landscape job. And like just picking a 70 pound weight up like nothing. Like I walked it over the truck and like holding it with two hands was nothing because I was doing like presses with 70 pound bell on one arm. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it, was, it was such strength, you know. And I noticed a big difference when I went working in the field doing other stuff, lifting stuff or pulling cable or like, you know, lifting things, even like tool bags. Remember when we did the, um, the, the four Sorry. minute battle rope session? Did you go and like, because kettlebells are more of like a quicker motion and like they train you to like think in a faster time frame sometimes yeah or can capable of it more trained in and be like also sometimes like you know, we have to but like we have the four period, minute we have the four minute the um <laughs> we have the four minute um battle rope session do you remember that yeah we did the four minute session okay literally oh, my favorite is time all time working out with you so i taylor it's freaking, we hadn't worked out a couple times. Taylor blew me off. He walks into the gym, right? And he asks what we're doing today. And <laughs> I set, I, I'm slowly setting up these stools. And I, I set up these three stools, like, and one's like two foot vertical. One's like maybe about a foot and a quarter. And the other's just like this tiny little one. Oh, the other's like, one was like three foot, two foot. And the other's like one foot yeah, sort of thing. Sense, yeah, like that. And then, so like, and I grab his kettlebell. And Taylor's like, what are we doing today? And I'm like... Well, we're going to jump up and down these stairs holding this kettlebell 300 times until you die. Yeah. 
That was the... And then, like, literally, <laughs> and then he's like, are you serious? And I pick up this kettlebell, and I, like, do 18 minutes at least. Like, I just picked it up and just start going. Yeah. And I just, like, did this for that long. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's not 300 times, but just go until you die, like, literally. And, and like, we did that. That was a crazy workout. And then, like, I remember by the end of it, I got, like, so much agility and speed from this. Taylor was holding the pads, and I was, like, literally doing this, like, spinning roundhouse kick that was almost like a partial front flip. Yeah. And I remember that, and I was, like, leaving the ground every time I was, like, launching it. And that was when um, the owner, Becky, came over and was like, somebody's going to get hurt. And I'm like, well, I'm licensed. Motion. I'm like, I'm licensed for this. Like... <laughs> Yeah. It's too fast of a motion. That was a crazy kick. I actually had that down. I'm thinking about joining the gym again like that, you know? Well, you know what would be awesome? Well, we never found a gym like Adrenaline. When we so stole the sign, bro. There is a gym here in town that has this big staircase in the middle of it. A word. You jump up and down the staircase. Do you remember when we... Bro, remember when we freaking stole the sign out of the back of the truck after it closed down? They, it was just sitting there with all the garbage, and we went back there, and we saw it, and we took the actual sign from the yeah. adrenaline gym. Do you still have that? <laughs> Word. Bro, can you, like, take a picture of that and post it on the video I monkey have it, I don't have Instagram? it with me. I, I, it's, it's not right here. I know where it is. Know where okay, it is. well, next time, place, yeah. next time, next yeah, time, you, uh, next time you see it, uh, you should take a picture of that. And uh, we should post it on the Booty Monkey. Maybe we should take a picture in front of it together. I think I think we should. And then we should post it on the Booty Monkey page. Bring it with you next time. <laughs> I can't bring it. Next time it, you go to Hardesty. my car. Next time you be at Ring of we'll throw it in your car. Because, it's, like, yeah. And then just keep it, it with you in the room. Like, and then you have it next time we shoot a podcast. Because I think we should uh, we should post like, something like that to our I Instagram page. I think it's in Hardesty, though. I think that's something that we should be doing. We should be being more active with our Instagram page too. Like times we get together and stuff, posting definitely because we don't maximize that advantage yeah. every time. You know? I gotta, I gotta put some stuff on my Instagram page too. You know? I really, I really like yeah. how how the Instagram page had turned out. I, you know, it's so funny. I created it, and I'm the one that doesn't know the password to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll write it down for you. It's a piece of paper. Oh, well, we'll do that after when we're done. Okay. Are we still filming? Yeah, we still are. Oh, yeah, right so what are we at for time here? I uh, think we're I pro an hour 37, right? Yep. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for the Voodoo Monkey Podcast Episode 6. Right a on. journey through some music, a revisit down some memory right. lane. Not a lot of jokes. Not a lot of jokes, but yeah, no one's good, a good solid podcast. Mm -hmm. That was the, Did we talk about that metaphor of the pancake and the batter and stuff like that? We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> how like really good one. I don't really remember totally how it goes, but the well, dark like side, the dark the side was the batter into the batter, and the batter is like your formative years, and mixing all these ingredients and stuff, right? And it's like who you are, and you like got your special recipe and stuff, and then you dump yourself into the pan when you like go and step. And no pancake own. is the same, right? Yeah, no pancake yeah. was it. Yeah, one yeah, identical obviously. was. Because we were all different. We were all our own pancake. We're all our own, and we each, each have a, we each have pancakes, we each have a darker recipes. side and a lighter side <laughs> too, recipes, right? Because you always have you always seem to cook the second side on the for a lighter time than you cook the first side, right? Yeah. So then you always end up with a darker side and a slightly lighter side, and that's how people are, right? Like you got the dark side, the light side, and that's what makes them a whole. Like you can't I mean, take away, you can't take away, you can't take away sides. their, well, you can't take away, <laughs> you know, unless you really burn it. Uh, you can't take away the, the bad or the dark from, from it because together with the rest of it, it all tastes good. You can't take away the dark because you don't know what the good is and you can't take away the good because you don't know what that, that bad is, right? They're flip side and that's what creates human. You can't pull them apart or you wreck the pancake, you know? Yeah. Weird. Pancake analogies. Yeah. Ended on a metaphor. Ended on a metaphor. Voodoo Monkey Podcast. Peace, Peace out. out till next time, guys.